Hello everyone and welcome! In this video I'm going to be explaining V6 engines. Now if you haven't already watched my videos on engine balancing, uh, you may want to check those out. I will include the links in the description. So, V6 engine, what do we have going on? Well, here we have our uh, engine and you can see the cylinders fairly offset from one another. But basically the uh, numbering system is just going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 uh, down the way back. And the firing order finally makes sense. Uh, it's very simple to remember. It's one, two, three, four, five, six. So it'll fire left, right, left, right, left, right, and then back up to the front. So how do we figure out the firing interval? Well, if you've watched my video on engine balance, uh, you know you just multiply the number of strokes by 180 degrees, divide that by the number of cylinders, and we get 120 degrees. So that's also the angle we will use for the V itself. So it'll be 120 degree V angle engine. Now there's also uh, more commonly used is a 60 degree angle, uh, and I'll get into that later in this video. So basically what we have, here's our crankshaft, um, and then the cylinders 1 and 2, 3 and 4, and 5 and 6 are all going to share a common crank pin. The crank pin is where the connecting rod connects to the crankshaft. So here we've got 1 and 2 connected. Uh, you go a little bit over and 120 degrees offset from that, 3 and 4, 120 degrees offset from that, 5 and 6. So if you're looking at this uh, crankshaft, this is kind of an isometric view. If you're looking at it uh, straight on like this, you're going to see 1 and 2 up top, 5 and 6 to the right, 120 degrees, 3 and 4, uh, 120 degrees from those other ones. So how does this balance out uh, within the engine as the cylinders are firing? Well, the primary balance, you have to use a counterweight uh, in order to compensate for, unlike uh, in the inline six engine, where that's not really required because it's naturally balanced out how the pistons move. So here, what we've got going on, um, so here's our angle, 120 degrees, and you can see uh, the counterweight here, as this, uh, this piston here is at bottom dead center, and so right at that time, the crankshaft uh, counterweight is also uh, facing towards it, so the forces come at each other, cancel out. Meanwhile, the other uh, piston, which is connected to that common crank pin, is on its way down. So as this rotates over, this is the direction we're going to be rotating, as this rotates over, this comes down, and as it hits bottom dead center, this counterweight is facing it, and both of those forces cancel each other out. So that happens uh, as this continues to rotate, this is now facing downward, and this is facing upward, and so these forces counter out. Um, and then as this hits top dead center, then it's now facing away from that, and those forces counter each other out. So you can kind of vary the counterweights uh, so that you change it, so for each of these downward forces, it's always balancing out. Now, one thing manufacturers like to do is use a 60 degree angle rather than a 120 degree angle because it allows for a much more compact engine. And the way you can do that is by either altering the firing order or by using something called a split pin crank. Now what a split pin crank is, is you're taking this crank pin where the connecting rods connect to the crankshaft and you're altering it so that these uh, cylinders one and two are at different locations on that angle. So you can see here, this is basically the split pin. So we're going to come up the crankshaft here, we're going to go up to our first cylinder, and then as we hit our first cylinder, the, the pin's going to be uh, moved out a little bit, actually 30 degrees, and then it's going to go back 60 degrees uh, in order for the second connecting rod to connect, and then back to this straight here. So what that does by having this 60 degree angle is this first cylinder is going to be firing 120 degrees before this cylinder, cylinder number two. And the reason you want to do that is because you want firing interval every 120 degrees. So by offsetting that crank pin, you can have it so it goes, fires on this one right here, and then doesn't fire this until it's rotated all the way till over here, and you've hit 120 degrees. So here's kind of an isometric view of what that crank pin would look like uh, within the crankshaft. So instead of this straight line here, it'd be these curves going back and forth, and you'd have that 60 degree angle to offset uh, the firing interval. So, advantages and disadvantages of a V6 engine. Well, the biggest advantage is that it's compact. So you can fit a pretty hefty engine in a fairly small uh, area, and so that's great for both front-wheel drive, rear-wheel drive, or all-wheel drive vehicles, um, that you can have that, uh, as far as packaging, you can put it wherever you'd like, um, and it fits nice and snug. Um, greater displacement over four-cylinder engines, 
Uh, so because four cylinders have that secondary imbalance, they're kind of limited. Um, so with naturally aspirated, you're going to have more power. One thing I didn't add on here also that's pretty important is the rigidity of the V6 engine compared to an inline engine. Uh, it's going to be much more rigid, uh, so that's another big advantage. Disadvantages, uh, complexity, two-cylinder heads, so you've got more friction uh, and wear and inertia in these two-cylinder heads rather than just having one on an inline. Um, center of gravity is still high uh, in comparison to a flat engine. Uh, the cost is a little bit higher than an inline engine. You've got those two valve trains um, and a bit more difficult uh, engine block. Um, then also you're going to have a secondary imbalance. So unlike uh, in an inline six engine where the forces naturally compensate each other out, this is more of two uh, I3 engines, inline three cylinder engines, uh, made it together, and inline three cylinder engines do not have their secondary forces balance out, so you can't have a secondary imbalance on a V6 engine. So those are the pros and cons. Um, thanks for watching. If you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.